Hi, this is uh, section 1.4, Basic Theorems and Probability, and we can derive all these from the axioms and the theorems we already proved in section 1.3. I didn't realize, but I already wrote all the steps to the proof in here. Um, these are the steps, um, the ones that you see that are highlighted. These are actually the steps I would write out in the board on the board in class. Um, the first theorem we've actually shown um, on a, on, a, on a previous page, I think in section 1.3, but more formally I'm going to put the steps together here. For any event A, we know that probability of A complement is 1 minus probability of A, and we've already used this fact. Um, but to be legal, we're going to prove it, and I'll just talk about the three main steps here. Um, first of all, if, if two events are mutually exclusive, then we know the probability of their union is just the sum of their probabilities. And we showed this was true for finite events, um, also in the theorem in 1.3. Um, a union, A complement is actually your entire sample space. So we know from axiom two, the probability of the sample space S is just one. But we know that that's A union A complement, which we already broke up to the sum of A and A complement. So now if I just do a little algebra, um, if I just move probability of A complement to this side and 1 to this side, um, or however you want to do it, I'll eventually end up with probability A complement is 1 minus probability of A. That's a really nice fact to know. Um, instead of doing example one, I'm going to go down here and do the other theorems. Um, theorem 1.5 sometimes is just a way to write things that make it easier, and those tricks you don't usually know until you've taken a few math courses. This says um, if A is a subset of B, so I drew uh, a diagram over here where A is a subset of B, then probability of B and A complement, that's this little ring out here is equal to the probability of B, the outside, minus the probability of A, the inside. So the first trick is rewrite B as two mutually exclusive um, events. So I'm writing B as the outside part here, B union, B intersect A complement, union the inside right here which is A intersect B. And these are mutually exclusive, and the reason why I like to do that is because then you can see um, I've just rewritten B in this way, but since they're mutually exclusive, I can add their probabilities. And so now I'm just going to, again, do a little bit of, well, I don't even have to do, I'm just, I'm just taking out the middleman there and rewriting it this way. Um, but B intersect A is over here, and since um, A is a subset of B, then that simply is just probability of A um, anytime, right? So we, we were given that A is a, is a subset of B. If A is a subset of B, then A intersect B is just A. So now this is what we had um, when we rearranged above. That's the probability of B minus B intersect A. But this is just A, so I'm going to replace it. So another nice... Um, result. A corollary is, is really just a consequence. So a, quant a consequence of that theory is that um, if A is a subset of B, then probability A will be less than or equal to probability of B. If they're exactly equal, they'll be equal. But if A is smaller, and that kind of makes sense, A is within B, the probability of this occurring is less than the probability of this occurring. And let's just do the big one. The addition theorem for two events, um, the probability A or B occurs is the probability A occurs plus B minus their intersection. And remember, we already had a rule, in fact, um, no, we didn't have, this wasn't um, axiom three, but with finite events, we said probability of A union B was just probability of A plus probability of B. But when we said that, we had a special case that allowed us to say this and remember the only way that this holds true if our a and b mutually exclusive if they're mutually exclusive then this intersection here is just zero and i haven't made up a new rule or anything like that so if you do have the nice case where two events are mutually exclusive the probability of their union is just the sum of their probabilities 
Um, otherwise, what's happening is if I have the intersection of these, um, here's probability of A right there, right? So I'm adding that. And here's probability of B right there, and I'm adding that. And notice now I've counted this as part of A, and I've counted this as part of B. So I have double counted this intersection region, and that's why I need to subtract it here at the end. Um, and again, this is just a fancy proof. I think part of it is knowing how to rewrite A union B. I'm going to rewrite it kind of fancy as A union B, and then B uh, intersecting with B intersect A complement. Oh, that didn't sound really good. So here's all of B. Um, I'm taking all of B, and I'm going to intersect it with um, B intersect A complement is just going to be this portion right out here. So really I have A. So A union B I'm rewriting as A, and now I'm just taking this little block right here, which is B intersect B intersect A complement, so right there. So rewriting it this way, and uh, you can probably tell why I'm rewriting it as two things that are mutually exclusive, because then I can break it up into the sum. Um, B intersect A complement, that's right here, that's um, a subset of B. Something's kind of bothering me about that. Um, there we know since B intersect A complement, well we do know Oh, let me get back to you for a second on that. Hi again. I'm glad I stopped because I thought this doesn't make sense because clearly you can see in this line um, B intersect A complement. That's everything outside of um, B and that is not a subset of B. So that this is actually this is not true. Um, what is true is B intersect B intersect a complement is a subset of B. So that's why I'm allowed to rewrite this as probability of B minus probability B intersect A from the above theorem because this thing is a subset of him. Yeah, because that was wrong. It was really bothering me. So yeah, I definitely, I told you I have typos in my notes and there's a nice one. If you ever find these, please just email me. They can be simple typos, you know, words I have wrong, but this, this is a bad one. So teacher gets bad score. Uh, well, we won't give me an F. We'll give me a D because I had the right idea. Well, I knew what I wanted to do, but maybe D plus. Except we don't have pluses at rows, but that's another story. Okay, so... Um, Here's where I was at. So now I'm just going to put it all together. There was a bunch of stuff going on here. Probably A union B. Um, we wrote this, we just rewrote this, remember, and then we could rewrite that as the sum of this and this. Um, from what we just did above, then I can rewrite this using theorem 1.5 as that. So there's, there's my proof. I mean, I guess what I'm more worried about here is that you know how to um, utilize this fact in examples that anytime you want to find the probability of the union, make sure um, if you don't have mutually exclusive events that you can add the probability and add the probability, but take away the intersection that you've added twice. And um, maybe in the next, I'll do one more maybe and just do some videos. Um, I mean, examples or exercises. Okay, so we'll stop this.